In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the regression tool. And the regression tool uses a linear regression model to predict a numerical outcome designated as the y variable from one or more predictor variables known as the x variables. So in this uh, data set that we have here that we're going to use, the variable we want to be able to predict is your grade in a statistics course. And then we're going to use, uh, first off, use one variable, and then we'll demonstrate how to use multiple variables. But we're going to use the variable hours of studying, so how many hours per week you spend studying statistics, to see if that can develop a regression or prediction model for your grade in the statistics course. So those are our two variables that we're using. So hours of studying will be the x variable. Grade in statistics would be designated as the y variable. So in order to do this analysis, we're going to go to the data tab, and then go to the data analysis tool pack. And we're going to choose the regression tool. And click OK. So the first thing we want to do is input our y or our outcome variable range in this case grade and statistics course and we want to then input our X range which in this case is going to be the hours of studying and click the ref edit button and then we want to make sure we have labels checked and then the confidence level checked and then we also want to indicate where our output will be placed so we're going to place it right here click the, click the ref edit button again okay and now we're ready to go we click the OK button Okay, so as we can see here is the output for this regression model. So again, we're using hours of studying to see if we can develop a prediction model for a grade in the statistics course. And so the R value for this relationship between these two variables is 0 0.50, and the R squared value is 0.25. So about 25% of the variance in the grade in statistics can be explained by the number of hours that you study per week. You can see the standard error of the measurement is about 15. We can also go to the ANOVA table and look to see if, based upon the null hypothesis, that the R value will be zero, if we can reject that and say that the R value is statistically significant and therefore the model will be statistically significant. We can look at the significance level here and we can see this below 0.05. So we could conclude that this is a statistically significant prediction model or regression model. So in other words, the predictions that are made will not be due to chance. It's going to be likely be due to the true predictive capability of this relationship. And this relationship would probably be true in the population as well. The next thing we're interested in finding, and this is relative to developing our actual regression equation, is first the y-intercept, which we can see here is 64.85, and then the slope for the regression line for the x variable, or hours of studying, is 1.96. So in this case, we're able to develop a regression model that predicts, or is able to account for about 25% of the variance in gradient statistics. It has a fairly large standard error, the estimate, 15 points, that's depending on your grading scale, is probably about one and a half levels, grade levels, um, in most cases. So that's a fairly wide prediction range. It is statistically significant, however, and then we have our two coefficients, our y-intercept and our slope of the x-line, or x-variable, so that we can then develop a regression equation to make predictions. So if we know someone's hours of studying per week, we could then reasonably predict what their grade will be in the statistics course. But that strength of that prediction will be moderate because of the level of the R squared being at a moderate level. Now if we wanted to take this one step further and look at the ability of multiple predictor variables to predict our single Y variable. So now let's say we wanted to see the ability of a grade on a prerequisite course so the grade that someone got in a prerequisite course prior to taking, taking statistics, and then the hours of studying per week during the statistics course to see if that could then predict their grade in the statistics course. So we're going to utilize the same tool, but now we're going to have two x variables, and so the output will give us some of the same 
results, the R, the R squared, the SEE, the ANOVA, and the coefficients, but now we're going to have two slope coefficients that we can incorporate, and then two X possibilities that we can incorporate into our regression equation. So to, to run this particular analysis, we go back to the data tab, back to data analysis, and choose the regression option. The Y output will remain the same. That's still the same variable we're trying to predict. But now our X range, we want to incorporate both variables in this case. And if you had more than two variables, you could can still do this the same way. You'll just highlight all the columns for the X variables you're interested in utilizing. And once we've highlighted our X variables, we click the Ref Edit button. Make sure our labels and confidence level boxes are checked. And we have the same output range to where our table is going to be placed. And then we can go ahead and click OK. So now you can see we have a very similar table to what we had before. Uh, we have a multiple R, so the, the R values or the Pearson coefficient between these variables is 0.69. And now the R squared is 0.48. So that means that about 48% of the variance in grade and statistics will, can be explained by the hours of studying per week as well as the prerequisite course grade. So that's a, a, a large improvement from just using the hours of studying variable by itself. So now we're able to explain almost 50% 50, 50 of the variance in the statistics grade, which is getting to the point where that's, that's a pretty significant uh, amount of explanation, explained variance. We can look at the standard error. It is now about 13 points, which is better than what we had before at 15. So that's narrowing. It's getting to be a little bit more accurate predictor. That's still a fairly large range. That's still about a whole grade level, uh, maybe a little bit more. So that's still a little bit of a wide range. We can go now to the ANOVA table and look at the significance of the ANOVA. Again, telling us whether or not this is a statistically significant prediction model. And this significance value is less than 0.05. So that tells us that we do have a statistically significant predictor uh, or predictor model. And then the last thing we can look at is the y-intercept, which is 0.978. And then the slope for the prerequisite grade x variable, which is 0.80. And then the slope for the hours of studying x variable or predictor variable, which is 1.70. And again, we would use these val values in our prediction model. And then knowing someone's prerequisite grade and then knowing someone's hours of studying we would then use that equation to be able to predict what their grade in statistics would likely be. So to summarize, what we learned how to do with this tool is to develop a regression model or a regression equation that could allow us to make predictions about an outcome variable using one or more predictor variables. And we want to examine the multiple R, the R squared, and the standard error of the estimate in order to get an idea of how good of a job this prediction model might do. We can also look at the ANOVA table to determine the significance of this model. And then lastly, we would find the coefficients that we would then use to create our actual regression equation, which could then be used to make actual predictions. So hopefully you've learned something from this video, and good luck using this technique in your own research.